A trust in a will is not a lifetime trust. It's called a testamentary trust, and it does not avoid probate. So when the person sets up the will and there is a trust in the will, all we have are papers. And those papers don't mean anything until the person passes, information and documents are gathered, people have signed various documents, and all of it is presented to surrogate's court, who reviews everything. If everything is sufficient, then we have an executor appointed. Then the executor goes through the entire estate administration process. And then once that process has concluded, there's a handoff from executor to trustee. And then finally, that trustee can go ahead and manage and distribute assets according to the trust in the will. So let's take for an example that the will states that the residuary estate passes to the trustee named in the will. And let's say the intervening period from date of death to when the executor hands off estate assets to the trustee is two years. Who's entitled to the income from those assets? Those assets, again, are subject to probate, but eventually are handed off to the trustee of the trust in the will. According to New York State default law, it's the trustee who's entitled to the income from date of death forward to when the trustee receives the trust assets. And that can be a source of confusion because we have this two year, in my example, two year period of a state administration. But it's just one of the ideas that I bring out in regard to administration of assets, because sometimes people are unaware of what they're setting their loved ones up for in regard to administration of assets. Whether we have a lifetime trust or we have a probate process where we have a will or we have an administration process where we're going through surrogates court, but we don't have a will and we have an administrator, we have an entire process that needs to be thought about at the time that you are planning with your estate planning documents. Now you don't need to know it all, but you need to be aware of what you're setting yourself and your loved ones up for. So for example, if you set up a lifetime trust and you're funding that lifetime trust with certain of your assets, you're thinking about who should benefit during your life in regard to those assets. You're not relying on a power of attorney that may have all sorts of complications and roadblocks and other drama associated with it to handle your assets. You're relying on your trustee and the trustee to follow the instructions that you carefully and intentionally provided for in your trust agreement that you proactively set up during your life, which is different than the other alternatives. And sometimes I have clients who, when they are doing their will, say, oh, well, I'm so glad I'm doing the will because that will avoid probate or that will avoid my loved ones having to go through this process. And I say, no, 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 what we're doing and what you're setting up here is for your assets to go through the probate process. So again, it comes back to being aware of the administration process that you're setting up for yourself during your life, and as well upon your passing and what that looks like for those you intend to benefit. And one other thing I just wanted to point out is that when you set up a lifetime trust, you can name that lifetime trust as the beneficiary on your assets, as opposed to a testamentary trust. In my opinion, you would not want to name a testamentary trust as the beneficiary of any of your assets because of what I just said. We just have paper up until the person who set up the will passes, goes through the whole process called probate and everything else. So to avoid that, you want to set up a lifetime trust and then you can name that lifetime trust as the beneficiary on certain of your assets. So be aware of what you're doing. This requires more than just 
knowing your objectives and information, it requires knowing a bit about the administration process that you're setting up, again, for yourself and for your loved ones. Oftentimes, I see people who are too overwhelmed, too pressured, and we have other people at play that are not really focused on helping the person who's going through all the turmoil out in, in the best way possible. It's more about what their needs are and what they're thinking. And I always wish I could go back in time in those instances and show the person what we're talking about in regard to administration of assets and how that can be affected both during your life and upon your passing. So more to be aware about. I hope this helps. This is Ruth George with Ruth P. George Law, PLLC, Trust and Estate Attorney. This video, as with any video I do put out, is for educational purposes only. It does not establish an attorney-client relationship. And I look forward to seeing you on another video.